Making basic stacker ring bands seems simple enough, but many beginning students are not successful and become discouraged with their lack of success. Making stacker bands by the hit and miss method will definitely be frustrating. In this video, you will learn what a stacker ring band is and learn my four must do steps in making any stacker ring band. Using these methods will eliminate the guesswork out of the process and help you become much, much more successful in making any basic stacker ring. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. What is a stacker ring band? It is simply a thin band ring that can be worn by itself or with other bands stacked together on the finger. Engagement and wedding rings are good examples of the traditional stacker rings. Today, any style or combination of rings can give the wearer a unique style and look. It is our job as jewelers to be able to make these bands creatively and most important, accurately. Why is it important to make your stacker ring accurately? The main reason is that if you don't, you will end up with the wrong size ring and have to rebuild it, wasting time and resources. So take the little extra time to do my number one must do, measurement. One way of figuring out the length of the material that you need for your ring blank is to use a ring blank sizing chart. This one is laid out with the ring sizes on this side and from US ring sizes, metric ring sizes, the diameter of the ring size, and then also across the top is the material thickness from 10 gauge to 20 gauge, also 2.6 millimeters up to 0.8 millimeters. What we do is we simply decide what ring size that you're going to be using and in this case we'll use size 7 or a metric ring size of 54 millimeters. We go across to the material that we're going to be using which is 14 gauge or 1.6 millimeters come down where the two cross and the length of the material that we need is 59.1 millimeters. Another way to determine the ring blank length is to use our calipers and a little math. We want to find the diameter of our ring size, which is size 7. So you want to make sure that you zero out your calipers. And then we'll pull them out to the size 7, try it in a double, couple different spots, and it looks like we're looking at 17.2 millimeters for our diameter. Another way to check your diameter of your ring size is to simply use your ring mandrel, just in case you don't have a ring sizer. So you want to go down to the size 7, pull your calipers out, and we'll check this in a couple different spots and here we are at 17.2 millimeters again. So that is our diameter of size 7. Now we'll use a little math to figure out the length of the wire that we need for the ring. We have our size 7. The diameter of the ring is 17.2 millimeters. The metal thickness that we're going to be using is 1.6 millimeters. We add those two together comes out to be 18.8 .8 millimeters. We take that times pi or 3.14 which equals 59.032 millimeters. That's the length of the wire that we need. Now we need to cut our wire to the length that we need for our ring size. Remember on the ring blank sizing chart it was 59.1 millimeters that we needed and on our calculations we had 59.032. I'm going to cut this at the 59.03. I'd really rather cut the wire a little bit smaller because you can always stretch the ring to fit exactly to the size that you need. 
you'll also notice that I have the wire laid out a little bit longer than what we need. So I'm going to be marking it here at our caliper mark and here at our caliper mark, which will be 59.03. I'm going to be leaving these extra tabs on the end here, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Before I mark the wire, I made sure that I anneal the wire so it's nice and soft. If you are unfamiliar about annealing, check out my other videos that talk about annealing. This is bringing the metal up to a dull cherry red color to make it soft. So I've annealed it and marked it at our length of 59.03 millimeters. I'm going to be taking the ends of the wire and bending them into a slight curve and I'm going to be using my ring bending pliers here and start the curve at the end and you'll notice here's the mark and you notice that I've bent it past that mark this is very important and you'll see in just a second you don't have to be using the ring bending pliers you can use your curved end pliers or any flat nose just to make sure that we get these ends started to curve we want to make sure where it's marked is it, it is curved through this section the end will be straight and this area will be curved just get it going get it curved and now we're ready to bend the entire wire. Before we go any further, I want to make sure that you realize that you want to mark your metal on the outside of the curves. And you want to mark it with a scribe. I've scribed these with a nice deep mark. And because it is hard to see, I've just taken some pencil, rubbed over it, and then that will make my mark stand out where I can see it a little bit better. So make sure that you have your marks on the outside of the wires on the curves. Now we're ready to bend the wire around the mandrel and because it has been annealed it will bend very easily and you'll notice that I'm bending it on size 5 instead of 7. Well the metal will have a tendency to stretch and so I want to make it go a little bit smaller and make our curve. And here's our two marks here and here. And then we want to pull the piece back to size 7. And then there we have the marks lining up with each other. After we have our wires pulled down to the size 7, I like to take a rawhide mallet and give it a few taps and make sure that the wire is nice and round all the way around the ring. Make sure that these ends are tapped down and that will make a nice curve all the way through the overlapping wires. Then I make sure that I pull it down to size 7 where it's nice and snug and then the wire where it is marked is all lined up nice and true and will be ready to cut it. My number two must do step is accurate cutting. We have our band here with the wires passing each other and our marks are showing the length of where we're going to be cutting. You'll notice that where we're going to be cutting the ring because the ends have passed each other this area where we're going to be cutting will be perfectly round which will make our ring perfectly round all the way around with no flat spots in it at all and I'm going to be cutting through both wires at the same time and it doesn't make any difference whether I cut at a diagonal this way or this way when I cut through both wires at the same time the saw blade will make that accurate cut and make the solder joint fit perfectly. I want to make sure when I do cut through 
that I'm cutting through at this side of the mark and on this part of the wire I'm going to be cutting on this side of the mark. I'm going to adjust the width here, pull it out and make sure that those two are just to the edges and when I cut through with my saw it will be right to the edges of both of the marks. Here is our cut and you'll see that the ring is perfectly round and will bring the cuts together and you can see that they fit perfectly for our solder joint. And the ring is nice and round with no flat spots. That's what you want. My third must do step is a good fit for the solder joint. As we saw, this solder joint is very, very nice and neat and will fit very well. But there might be, because of the saw blade going through it, there might be a small burr on there. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much there because I have used a, a real small tooth saw blade for it. But if you do notice a little bit of burr or any roughness in there, don't file it. Simply take some real fine emery paper and just put it in the slot and give it a couple little rubs on both sides. You don't need to overdo it. That will take any of those little tiny burrs off very, very easily. And then we'll be ready to take and fit this perfectly. And as you see, they're not lined up so we want to make sure that we push the metal so it goes beyond itself and then bring it back and make a nice fit or a good fit that's the third must-do step now we're ready to solder our stacker ring band together I've pickled it make sure that we have good clean metal we have that good fit and so now we're ready to apply some flux to it. We use the borax flux painted on all sides of the ring. And I'm going to place our pallion of solder underneath the ring. So the ring is actually laying on top of the solder right on the solder joint so it's not going to move and we're ready to heat it up. For this solder joint I'm using my Presta light torch with a nozzle of number one so it's a fairly small uh, tip and I don't need an awful lot of heat to heat this up. Go around the piece, warm it slightly, have that flux bubble and boil off. Heat both sides of the solder joint evenly. And there's the solder running up into the solder joint. Here's our ring right out of the pickle. And you can see our solder joint right in here. There is a residue of solder here but we've used the fourth must-do step and that's using a minimum amount of solder. You do not want to overdo the solder on these stacker rings. Now this is one that we can clean up very easily if we had too much solder to it but if you're going to be using a twisted wire or a beaded wire or any kind of a decorative wire you're going to have solder flowing all over it and you'll never get it cleaned up. So that is the fourth must do step is to use minimum solder. Let's take this and put it on the ring mandrel and let's see how close we came for the size of it. 
we'll slide the ring onto the mandrel. There's our size 5 where we had initially wrapped it and then slid it up to size 7. So now let's slide it up to size 7 and see how close we are. Oh, snugs up right at size 7. What, what a deal. We did a good job of measuring and following our must-do steps of good measurement, accurate cutting, good fit, and using a minimum amount of solder. That was an easy one for using just square wire. Let's take and do some twisted wire and some beaded wire. I'm not going to go into all the details on each one of them, but I'm going to point out the important parts of using a different type of wire. Here's our beaded wire up close. And as you can see, there's not much space in between the beads. And to get our right ring size, it actually needs to be cut in between the beads and then resoldered. The problem with doing that is if we cut right in between the two beads, we're going to have two big flat spots where the saw went through, and then when we resolder it, it's going to be a big glob right there. So what we need to do is we need to cut the wire a little bit large and come and cut it in this area here and this area here. That will make the band a little bit larger, but then we're going to file that excess down and round off the ends of the beaded wire. And then we'll put those two nice rounded points together, put a minimum amount of solder in there, and solder it, and you'll never see that solder joint. Here's our beaded wire after it's been cut filed and I did a little bit of emmering on it, rounding out those two beads that come together. Then we'll use the minimum amount of solder on it and you'll never see that solder joint. Here's our beaded band ready to be soldered and here's where our solder joint is right in here. This is extremely small and we want to make sure that we use the minimum amount of solder on it. It's always good to err on the side of too little solder than too much because you can always add a little bit more solder. Let's flux this up and get going. Go in and heat both sides, kind of heat the whole ring first, warm it up. Go in and heat both sides evenly, burn off the excess flux. And then go in with a really small pallion of solder. I mean it slightly. It's going to go very quickly here, so keep an eye out. And there we go. Here's our ring right out of the pickle. And this is where we soldered it here. And as you can see, it blends in just beautifully. You can't see any extra solder there at all. So always use the minimum amount of solder whenever you're soldering anything decorative. You can always add extra solder, but it's very difficult to take it away. Here's our twisted wire, and it can be complicated to line the ends up. What we've done is overlapped the two, and then I've eyeballed it as to where those those wires should match up and I've marked it with a pencil. I'm going to cut it the same way as we did our regular stacker ring by cutting through both wires at the same time. This will give us a good smooth solder joint and it should fit very well. Here's our twisted wire after it's been sawed. This is where we're going to be soldering it. And remember, there's two wires in a twisted wire band. I'm going to be soldering this one first, and then I'll go back behind and put a little solder back here too. And again, I do not want to use a whole bunch of solder. Minimum amount of solder. I can't stress that enough. Go in and we'll heat our ring up. Warm it, zoom in on the two sides of the solder joint. 
burn off that excess flux and place our solder right on top there make sure it's touching both sides of the wire warm it up slowly and evenly on both sides and there it flows down into the solder joint I've added a little bit more flux to see if I can go ahead and solder this second wire in the back here I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that really well but while this is nice and warm I want to go ahead and add my other pallion of solder in here and solder this second wire and there we go and right in here is where the solder joint is I had to add an extra pallion right in here because it just wasn't enough and it's always good to have too little solder because you can always add if I had used a huge pallion in here this whole section would have been flooded with solder and it would look terrible stacker rings can be a lot of fun to make and now that you know how to make the basic stacker ring accurately turn your attention to try to make them more creative in my next video, Stacker Rings Part 2, we're going to be looking at some creative and fun and exciting ways of putting the stacker rings together. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out.